Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Espinosa's 601 La Bamba Sake Bomb. And you're watching Cigars Daily. Get more out of all our videos now when you watch them on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you can even leave your rating for cigars right next to mine under each review video. If you're a fan of that really full-bodied, full-strength flavor in a cigar, you want something with spice and pepper that will pull your hair and call you a dirty name, then you should probably know about Espinosa Cigars because blender Eric Espinosa is known for putting out really punchy stuff. His Maduros are extra Maduro-y, and even his mild cigars really aren't all that mild or creamy. All of his stuff sort of has that more peppery side to it, and today we're looking at the 601 La Bamba in the sake bomb size. Now, this is a brand that was called La Bamba because it's supposed to be a literal flavor bomb, exploding with so many notes in the profile in your mouth. It's really good. But when they made this sake bomb size, they actually re-blended La Bamba to make it a little bit more powerful. So my big question with this cigar right here is can it produce on that flavor bomb aspect while giving some more of that punchy spice or pepper that so many Espinosa fans are looking for? And the only way to find out is with a cut and a light. All right, so for sure, some pepper and spice at the outset here. All the way across the tongue, there's just that little bit of spicy leftover feeling that tingles after all the smoke is gone. And black pepper on the retrohale, not overpowering, certainly not as much as I've seen with some other Espinosa blends. But here, for sure, strength is a feature up front. Flavor profile starts off a little bit more simple. There's some oak in the flavor here and a little bit of leather, but not much else other than pepper and spice. So depending on what your preference is for a cigar, that'll be really great for you or a huge bummer. I don't know. But I know some guys who that's like the whole thing about cigars, pepper, spice, and nothing else is really all that nice. So let's jump into the first third and see how this develops and where it takes us. Well, that is for sure punchy. I've had cigars with more pepper and more spice on them before, but it holds on very nicely in the first third here. Both of those things, spice on the tongue, pepper on the retrohale, very much present right now. And the flavor notes all pretty much the same. Oak and leather are present. Only new addition here is sweetness. That is joined, although it's sort of tagging along behind the rest of that profile, which is fine. And a cigar like this, they said they blended it to be stronger, and I would say it's punchy punchier, but not even full on full strength, like closer to a medium or medium plus in terms of strength, just with a really punchy character. And I, I like that because a lot of times that pepper and, and that spice, they come along with that full on full strength cigar to get it in a more medium strength stick is pretty enjoyable here in the first third and construction is respectable, holding a nice long ash at this point and burning well, although it really started to canoe on one side in the first third. I didn't touch it up, just let it go, but it sort of worked itself out. So I'll keep an eye on that, but I want to see if this flavor develops. It certainly has some more room to come to life right now. So let's jump into the second third, and see where it takes us. Through the second third, it's apparent this thing was blended to be a pepper and spice bomb. Espinosa comes right out and says that, but really those are still the two key features of the profile. At the same time, a couple more notes have made their way in. There's a little bit of graham cracker here. There's a little bit of almonds here, but both of those notes tag along behind that nice uh, leather and oak that are up front along with pepper and spice. That's really the core of the flavor here with sweetness in the background of those other notes. So not a a tremendous amount of balance to this flavor but again if you're looking for pepper and spice this is going to give you some of that now at the same time the construction on this thing is pretty interesting so take a look at the wrapper on this with me this thing uses a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper. In fact, the whole cigar is a Nicaraguan Puro. Wrapper, binder, filler, all from one country. But there's a couple things here that stand out to me. The first is this little tiny pigtail off the top. It's supposed to be like the wick on a bomb. And the thing is cool. The issue I have with it is that it just sort of drapes itself down one side of the cigar. I've seen little 
twisty tails of tobacco like this wrapped around a cigar add to the flavor. So I don't know if this is going to do that, but I'll be watching for it. Also on the foot of the cigar, it uses just a foot band, which has become a double-edged sword for me. I like the foot band because it can protect the cigar. If it drops on the ground, it keeps that foot from getting cracked. But I also don't like it because the second you remove that foot band off of there, the cigar loses part of its identity. Fortunately, you got that little pigtail drape down the side. So as a construction and appearance thing, this thing hits some really nice marks for me and misses in a couple other areas but now i want to take it into the final third and see what happens by gosh if this thing gets stronger or more spicy or more peppery then i'll have probably an issue on my hands here but let's jump into the final third see where it takes us and what kind of score we get so this has surprised me in the final third. I, I didn't get what I expected. I thought that pepper and spice and strength were going to show up in force, club me over the head, throw me in the van, and take me out to the desert and bury me in a shallow grave. But it wasn't like that at all. It was actually much better than that. Flavor is still present in the final third. Oak and leather still here in full force. Pepper and spice still present. Some of those background notes have fallen away. And that's typical with the final third. But overall, this thing gave me some really good like pros and a couple of cons. The pros, if you really like pepper and spice, this will give you that to some degree. There are other Espinosa cigars that have it more for sure. But if you're looking for something maybe a little bit earlier in the day, this probably fits the bill for that. Also, the thing did give me some nice transitions. The downside, I just wanted to see more balance in that flavor and didn't really find that at any point in the cigar. My final smoking time on this has been 52 minutes on this Corona size and my score came out to an 85. This did give me some nice flavor and I like a cigar when you can find the pepper and spice together. I just missed a couple of things that were pretty key for me. But the big deal here and what really matters is what you guys think about this. So if you have had Espinosa's 601 La Bamba, especially the sake bomb size, drop a comment down below and let everybody know what you think about it because we'll all learn better when we learn together. And check this video out on CigarsDailyPlus.com and leave your rating for the cigar right next to mine under the review video. Thank you all so much for watching. This this is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily, and I will see you in the comments.